Hi everyone, this is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another comic book reading. Today is, what is the date today? Today is April 26, 2021. And we're doing a live stream on Twitch where the chat basically decided out of four books that we wanted to read T-Man from 1952 from Quality Comics okay and uh, this is considered to be the golden age of comics and we just recently bought this uh, a few months ago uh, maybe two three four months ago and we got a great deal on it we paid I believe uh, like ten dollars for it I forget what the grade for this is um, it was a low grade I believe but we'll take a look at the grade on it okay and it's a beautiful cover the cover is very nicely intact let me take this out so we don't get the sheen off the mylar that I have it in okay take off the tape so it doesn't snag on the comic when we pull it out I usually always take off the tape okay I mean the beauty of this thing is uh, there's nothing the cover is fully intact and let's check it out it might be no oh, it's in pretty good shape this looks beautiful gang beautiful and like I said this is t-man number three it came out in January 1952 okay cover is by Reed Crandall okay and the pencils uh, the inside pencils are by Edmund good okay um, and Edmund Good was uh, it was pretty prolific I believe in the golden age of comics okay and uh, who's the other person Edmund Gore 20th century let me see what I got written up here uh, was a 20th century Canadian illustrator right and that's one of the reasons which I found this cool as well he was a Canadian artist okay and co-author of more than a dozen comic books during the golden age of comics and there's another person that's worked on this which is harry anderson and harry anderson again was present during the golden age, age of comics but he basically um, decided not to do any more comics i believe in the mid 1950s okay and irving steinberg has uh, some work in this as well but let's take a look at this there isn't i i couldn't figure out who did the script for this the writing for this in terms of great for this right now this looks very damn good very good very good indeed and this would be more of a mid-grade okay in this issue an authentic case based on the files of the US Treasury Department and at the beginning of the live stream there's a little bit of chunk missing here take a look see that right see that and at the beginning of this live stream uh, with chat uh, we mentioned that this book came out in 1952 and the CIA MI6 backed coup of a democratically elected government in Iran where they installed a brutal dictatorship in Iran took place in 1954 when the CIA and MI6 were um, basically overthrew the democratically elected government of Mozatek and installed the Shah and this is from quality comics right so this comic came out two years before that overthrow took place right and one thing we noted is that in popular culture in media usually central governments central power ends up using a lot of different platforms to push an agenda where they try to program brainwash their citizens into supporting certain wars and certain covert operations where they're destabilizing uh, other parts of the world and this is as far as I'm concerned a very much related to that right and that's that occurs in the golden age of comics silver age of comics bronze copper modern age of comics that's taking place right now as well 
not just through comic books but through television series music movies newspapers uh, everywhere in our society you will find propaganda death trap in iran a pulsating pete trosk thriller right and those of you uh that know anything about iran you'll know that this isn't really iranian headgear this is a more turkish uh style of headgear but we haven't had read the story maybe the story begins in turkey and continues in iran how to fix any part of any car cool nice ignition oil filter generator carburetor motors auto repair manual very cool very cool i don't think we've seen an auto repair manual right free seven day trial take a look free seven day trial so basically learn how to become a mechanic covers every job on every car built from 1935 through 1951 very cool remember this came out in 1952 right if you're looking for a manual that does this now for every car that's created for how long is this uh 20 minus four so for 16 years i think you would need you would need i don't know what you would need and this is uh, a very nice copy very nice copy right very nice copy so i was mistaken i didn't pay a low grade i, I might have paid a very low grade price for this but this is definitely not low grade this is mid grade uh easy right so let's have a read through this okay and uh just so you know the people that have worked on this the cover is done by reed crandall okay beautiful cover by the way beautiful cover right okay the their stories the pencils are done by edmund edmund good inks by joe uh Kurta, okay legendary golden age artist uh, edmund good has done work in this harry anderson has done work in this and Irvin steinberg has done work in this okay take a look at this let's look at the usually we're taking a look at the advertisement on the back uh, back of the front cover and we're getting a raid from professor exp welcome raid on twitch 10th anniversary special featuring guaranteed quality rings and watches free 10 day trial there's a lot of free 10 day trials here right eh? interesting what's the price on some of these genuine imported swiss ladies watch special 895 beautiful feminine with silk cord brand jeweled price very cool and there's there's a there's a lot of people out there that collect watches as well and some of those watches uh pretty expensive let's look at the fine read the fine print here gang let's see what this is all about t-man january 1952 number three published bi-monthly by comic magazines 163 pratt street Mer Mer meridian connecticut meridian connecticut executive offices 578 summer street stamford connecticut Everett M. Arnold, General Manager, Alfred uh, Grenet, Editor, Richard Arnold, Associate Editor. Yearly publication, six copies, 90 cents, foreign, dollar fifty. Applications for entry, a second class matter pending at the post office at Mer Meridian, Connecticut, under the Act of March 3rd, 1879 the characters and events pictured pictured herein are entirely uh, fictitious 
The publisher accepts no responsibility for unsolicited materials. Editors and advertise editorial and advertising offices, three four seven, Madison Avenue. Wow, it's Madison Avenue, New York, seventeen New York. Copyright nineteen fifty one by Comic Magazines, printed in the USA. Very cool, very cool. Is this cut? No, the cover is very nicely intact. This is a really nice, great copy, gang. I like it. I like it. Very good, very good. Gang, should we just start reading? Let's start reading. We're not even going to flip through this. There is a handful of stories here, I believe. So let's just go through. Uh, there might be two to three stories here. Okay. And I've never read a T Man comic book. This is my first T Man comic book, as far as I can recollect, uh, in my collection. So, very cool. T Man. Oh, Cobra. Let's read what the text has to say. You think this is trouble? Ha! Huh just stick around and and see the things that can happen to an innocent tea man when his back is turned with britain and russia scrambling for control of iran's oil fields anything could happen and i thought i was ready but even with my crazy experiences i'd never figured on finding myself troubles double it's actually talking about the politics of the time right control over Iran's oil and at the time gang Britain had control of Iran's oil okay just so you know let's take a look at this let's take a look at this very cool very cool in the as shal hotel near Iran's great oil fields a week of secret diplomatic meetings draws to a close then we are agreed on the terms of a treaty uh, Mir, Mir Reza we are agreed agreed Effendi the British and Americans may have the exclusive rights of our oil production I sign because you have proved yourself friends of Iran. You respect our laws and customs as others do not. He says, after all, Mir Riza, are we not seeking to promote the dignity of all mankind? That is the way a free world would have it. Either the British or the Americans says that, right? Is he smoking a big cigar? He is. He's got a cigar in his hand right there. Big fat cat. But hopefully it's a Cuban cigar. Suddenly, hold it, mop top. I'll take that scrap of paper. What? Who are you? Trask is the name. Chum Pete Trask, U.S. Treasury Department. My orders are to break this up but good man are you insane has your government gone mad he says just smart why should we uh, split oil whoa when we can bring a few troops and take it all stick around Bob I've got a present for you whoa whoa I'm already loving this comic crazy what the here raghead take this little fellow home and barbecue him for breakfast what ah uh, a pig the insult beyond all insults to to a muslim i think they spelled muslim wrong oh my god what lunatic madman wait until your government oof slaps him in the face Take it up with Washington, kiddo. 
and see how far you get. Whoa. Oh my god. This is the most intense page ever. Wait a second. What what was the deal? We are agreed, Effendi. The British and Americans may have the exclusive rights to our oil production. What is going on on this page? This is wow i need to collect this whole series this is insane <laughs> what is... oh my god what the hell are you hurt sir glenn mir riza you must not uh, you must not this halt the treaty you must not this halt the treaty what treaty infidel dogs I'll sign my treaty with the Soviet. Be glad I don't order your heads to fall for, uh, fall for this insult. He's like tearing up the treaty. Whoa. There were lots of things wrong. Where there were were lots of things went <laughs> lots of things wrong with what happened in Iran, but the chief chief one was that i was ten thousand miles away the night it happened oh okay let's check this out yo look at that baby fight sam he's doing some catching fish him nice fish eat good with bacon just think five whole days with nothing to do but fish Shh, plane come fly heap fast heap low what language is this guy speaking it was an army jet and he was hot he buzzed us twice and then let us have it a message streamer a message streamer oh no there goes my fishing trip so i'm assuming he's the real agent that this guy's pretending to be right let's check this out so that was that i had no idea what was up but i knew it was serious u.s treasury department pete um Im imperative you fly from you fly iran at once world peace in balance contact lacy a brush a brush off field office douglas chief let's check this out it was 28 miles to the nearest landing field i made it in 26 minutes over a goat track anybody say indian don't scare him crazy like fool this indian heap scared oh my god <laughs> Wowzers. A day later, when we came in over uh, Abra Abrashar, I still didn't know what lay behind my urgent summons. I hit for our field office by way of the hotel Faz uh, Fawaz to leave my bag. Suddenly, huh? Hotel Fawaz so there you are you two-timing double crossing wolf oh someone's been impersonating him look at this look at this even with the ladies must be with the ladies it is indeed it's the lady in the cover right oh are you speaking to me gorgeous ha i'm not speaking to paul revere horse revere's horse your ears are too long, Pete Trask. Ksh, slap. Crack. Well, I'll be an Ardvark's uncle. I never saw that babe before in my life, he says. I pulled my jangle wits together and walked to our field office. Hello, Chief. What in blazes up now? Our number's up if you can't straighten out a mess pete come on in and watch your step 
it is he the defiler of the faithful that's the blighter who struck me that's the blighter who struck me my government demands his immediate arrest and trial i'm assuming that's the british rep take it easy boy did you uh did you or didn't you attack these gentlemen in the hotel fawaz two nights ago are you nuts two nights ago i was camping in the rockies and i've got the mosquito bites to prove it then for the first time i got the whole cockeyed story so far as our department knew it so somebody's impersonating you pete to insult our friends and block that oil treaty he must be found you're telling me the louse even muscled in on my love life and that's going too far pete says <laughs> It took a lot of talking, but we finally got what might be uh, laughingly called a chance. Just hold off until I find this egg, sir. You'll know which of us is which by his black eye. Very well. Uh, the Iranians, I'm assuming that's supposed to be Iranian guy. Uh, Iranians don't wear, wear very seldom. And, well, no, I guess some do. Very well. You have 24 hours find this imposter and prove your uh, fantastic story and i will consider the treaty let's check this out 24 hours he says how generous can you get stop beefing that's 24 hours more than i thought we'd get just get out and perform miracles find the lead somehow he says pal I've got a lead with a shape shaped like Venus and a slap like a mule's kick. Be suing, be seeing, suing you, suing you, Pete says. At a time like this, he can think of girls. I could think of one girl, the one who might lead me to my deadly double. Pete thinks. She came out of the Hawaz if i can find her she can tell me how she met the rat who per pretended to be me she's american about five feet uh two blue eyes but effendi you asked about miss lorna marcy only 10 minutes ago and i told you then room 412 suddenly i was i was cold all over i say old chap pushes the guy away one side buster this is life or death he says this was no time for a polite knock i hit the door on a 412 with everything i had that rat knows i'm in town and knows she could spill his beans for him if i'm too late smack goes through the door oh take a look at this assassins oh and his double is right there nice look trusk get him quietly you're welcome to try he says strike quickly Razma. there must be no outcry assassins this will oops let me take that before you cut yourself stupid oh he grabbed his wrist that's actually one thing you're supposed to do when you're in a fight with a grab the hand i believe that has the knife ah oh, my wrist Shh. You heard what the boss told you. Smack. Aik. This'll keep you both quiet. One punch knockout. What's this about? 
now you imitation of a oh oh he's got a gun too wait mr trust trask if you make one move i will throw caution to the winds and destroy this dangerous witness You win for the moment. Let the girl go, hero. Do not do no such thing, Vashil. Your bungling has caused enough trouble already. Oh, I wonder who this is in the background. Who's this? Who's this? Well, well, Fedor Kogov. So you're behind this cute trick. Exactly, Trask. The idea was born to me the day I saw Vashil and realized how he resembled you. I've been training him. Uh, don't get muscle bound, Patty, your own back, Coggy. You couldn't fool anybody in the department. Naturally not. But after you and the girl, vanish he can insult iran once more and our work will be done i wonder which country he's supposed to be representing i wonder wake up bungling dogs sons of camels take these two to my headquarters and see that they utter no sound a knife against the girl's throat should do it comrade oh indeed the russians a eh? trusk is a uh, chivalrous fool who does not want her harmed let's check this out don't mind me but that's the nicest thing i ever heard said about a man the girl says chin up honey maybe chin up honey maybe you'll get a chance to uncork that slap on a better cheek oh that then i slapped the wrong man i'm so confused she says silence bring them quiet uh, quickly while while the hall is empty of prying eyes he says i'd wondered how Ko Kovag, Kogov figured to get us out of the hotel. It was a shock when I got the answer. In the elevator, you two. My headquarters are on the top floor and do not expect help. My country quietly bought the F Fawaz Hotel some time ago, and my men are everywhere, he says. Ah, there was a sticky stick holding the spring gate of the elevator open my urge to kick some something got too strong to resist so i kicked <laughs> there was a tight spring on that gate and it uh, caught kogov neatly ugh help oh if i only had a, a custard pie she says This is like the old school elevators it was a sliding door in front right let's check it out never mind honey this is the same idea only smear smear Ko kogov was too sore to be uh, cautious now outside a gun opened up and i went into a power dive too fast to enjoy the scenery bang bang oh the girl's uh skirt being up hang on kitten here we go eek oh that's the elevator see the little handle so he's pushing the elevator down real fast We hit the main floor and started out. Run for the street and ew. Kogov must have, must have slid down the banister. 
Oh, is he firing a gun? I think he's firing a gun. Bang. There are telephones in the halls. We would call we would call the desk. We shot back for uh to the third floor and burst out. Can't we start a fire or something to draw them off? Afraid to pet. This is a legitimate hotel. We might trap old folks or children. Come on. Back into the elevator. Quick. Pete says. Kill them. Don't let them escape. Bang. You're, you're stopping between floors, Mr. Trask. Pete to you, sugar. <laughs> Pete to you, sugar. And this is all our only hope. They have enough goons to cover every floor in this flea trap. Come on, I've jammed the controls so the cage is locked here. Locked there. I hope this is the only way out. I'm, I'm with you to the bitter end, Pete, she says. quiet now if they don't hear the elevator moving they won't know where we are I've got a slim I've got a slim gamble in mind he says I can climb you go ahead she says I'm gambling that Kogov left by double Vashil to guard the fourth floor with only five slugs in my gun i'm with you i can bite and kick and scratch she says oh they're about to open it up the door to the fourth floor from the elevator shaft that was a pretty good hunch on him our lady luck was still riding with her favorite son and the guy's still smoking brother i wish i had time to enjoy this smack it's beautiful pete Bam, the girl's cheering him on someone's coming up the stairs quick fall down and keep still play it play it the way i deal the cards karmat kogov quickly i have captured the filthy spies good work vashil we will take no more chances we'll kill them and throw their bodies down the elevator shaft he says you wouldn't want 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 to bet on that would you fatty uh your trask he says kogov started to swear and i slapped his face <laughs> absent-mindedly forgetting the uh, point uh, getting the 45 automatic in my hand smack sit down and shut up screwball arc the other one i'll kill oh grab his gun Lor lorna oh look at this look out pete nice work kitten bang who is she shooting There was a uh, scattered uh, fusillade, fusillade of shots from below, and then the chief came galloping to the rescue. Where were you when I really needed you? Pete says. Pete, you're okay. We were trying to get in. The Reds had the doors barricaded when the shooting started. <laughs> Kicks the guy stop moaning vashil back in russia 
you you'd be shocked for getting messed up with a girl when you were on the job i hope they send them back they the slimy rat she says kicks up Mereza came, saw and apologized. An oil treaty was signed then and there. Mr. Trask, I owe you an apology. If there is anything my country can do for you, well now, you mention it, sir, there might be, he says. What does he want? Stand, stand by to phone your best hospital. Uh, hospital, I'm about to try to kiss a lady who saved my life but I know from experience what kind of slap she can hand out ha <laughs> ha what a crazy story that first page was insane and the whole premise of this thing right and this is present day politics right now wow 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 crazy crazy let's read the second story again let's read the second story let's see who they're trash talking now let's check this out the case of the narcotic smuggler look at this look at this the case of the narcotic smuggler a true case adapted from the files of the u.s treasury department indeed indeed Let's see what this is about if you want action excitement danger become a u.s treasury agent the t-man goes everywhere does everything and all too often death dances at his side but you have to be a man of versatile talents and no fear to get on this force follow the thrill-packed adventures of narcotic agent oscar uh, Oscar W. Polkach as he hurdles into the ambush at Woodbine Check. Let's check this out. In May of 1947, customs officers learned of a huge narcotics ring operating in Calexo on on or Calexo on the border I was reading that on as an Ontario I'm going Calexo Calexo on the border Calexo on the border border bar Rio Club heading the ring was dapper Jesus de Mara self-styled Al Capone of Baja California he's a big Hollywood narcotics buyer one watch him maybe we can unload something on him see how see hit Jesus but if we do we must shoot the comp uh, competition they are all after him Posing as the big holy, uh, ho posing as the big Hollywood buyer was Oscar W. Pol Polkach, top-notch narco narcotics agent. As you see, I have the cash for the opium I ordered. He says, "Buena, it is good. The delivery will be made on schedule, Senor." Paul Koch's order of opium was fees seized by custom officers as it was being delivered from Mexico. Eva Perez Cruz, you're under arrest for transportation of narcotics. No, no, 
I tell you, I know nothing about that opium in my car. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Suspicious of Paul Paul Kasha, the smugglers made uh, many false app uh, appointments to test him. Coyote Spring, the fifth time they've left me holding the sack checking me of course he says finally on june 22nd the break came so they're going to deliver 138 five five tail cans of opium uh, to me tonight at woodbine check that's right woodbine check this may be it boys so get over here fast early that evening in a garage Paul Koch and other customs men made plans Doubt they'll, they'll be watching so I've got to go go it alone boys that's suicide Oscar I say a couple of us will ride in the back of your car and we'll send a couple of boys out to that old building a few hundred yards from the rendezvous maybe a good plan I've got a funny hunch that mob is up to something he says ah look at that they've taken the seat out of the the car right so they're gonna hide down there covered with this blanket and suitcases You'll look just like a pile of luggage. Only bad thing is, we'll be blind till the action begins. Just after seven, Paul Koch hit it for Woodbine check and possible death. Ought to be there about now, he says coming out of a tunnel I guess no no he's just driving down Woodbine check is on the all-american canal which is right on the border a great spot for an ambush in case those dope peddlers have any idea let's check out the boys cool. three of them eh? armed to the teeth two well it's my first move lights up a cigarette buenos dias, di buenos dias senors did you bring the goods we brought it and you senor you brought the money i think it's best if we put the stuff in the car senor uh damara then i'll pay you as you say senor sorry damara we're taking over come out boys he says why you it's a double cross devils I might have known it was a trick drop your gun the matter or we'll drop you he's got double guns going on it was a vivid duel in darkness zing 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 bang bang down boys a couple of guns with rifles have joined the fight yeah I thought I heard a, a 30 caliber slam there they are Carampa it is good that Jesus had us come I'll get one bang bang
but the rifleman smoke spoke too soon thou stop your smuggling days for a while bam shoot some oh the two customs men who had hid in a nearby building joined the battle get down oscar they'll riddle riddle you glad you're here boys they must have sus suspected us from the first and laid an ambush he says we'll never nab them this way let's spread out flank them i'll take the left zing 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 yet one of those slugs stung my ear oh right top of the ear right there zing man he's dodging those bullets pretty good look at that shot's coming from everywhere from the trajectory on that is coming from behind from the side and from the front good thing they haven't got a tommy gun haha <laughs> zing 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 one of the smugglers appeared to welcome capture honest senor i never fired a shot i surrender but please don't kill me all right i'll just snap the cuffs on you and take you back to the car he's putting his handcuffs on him a half hour later the fight was over and only one man in custody three of them yelled so they must have been hit well we might as well get back to town at least we have the opium he says later in calexo tin bullet holes in the old crate in the car huh and that's a hired car boy will this cost you plenty guy taking snapshots of the car so police chief chief Juan Adarga got assassinated because he refused to give the smugglers safe conduct across the border and they retaliated by machine gunning him on July 2nd 1947 two months after the battle six of the smugglers were in indicted indict indict in indicted indict indicted <laughs> brutal did you get uh, get them all mr Pol polkash we believe at least two of them died of gunshots jesus de mara the leader got away and is still a fugitive breaking a narcotics ring is routine stuff with oscar polkash t-man We'll get Derma, Derma, Demara someday. The Treasury Department has long arms and lots of them. They call that Hydra. <laughs> That's probably the most accurate description of the Treasury Department. It's Hydra. And for those of you that are following Marvel Comics and stuff with captain america and winter soldier and the falcon falcon winter soldier what's this one let's check this out that's cool that's a gigantic clan t-man t-man let's check this out let's see how many more stories there are so we got man let's read the description of this one i think we got time for one more reading and this is the center and it's really nicely intact the staples so this is a very good copy like better than very good <laughs> this is like five five point five grade nice what does the subscription say like the u.s marines as tre treasury agent is supposed to be ready for any emergency on land or sea or in the air that's okay with me as long as i've got a chance to hit back when the fight starts 
but deliver me from any more salt water shindigs that send me down under the briny briny to face death in the deep death in the deep let's check this out so that's one story death in the deep oh look at this black hawk advertisement for black hawk nice this is a very sought after comic series okay you would have been smart to buy these a great action magazine alive with excitement as timely as today's headline fast becoming the most popular comic magazine in america on sale every month what, is, what does that say january issue on sale october 24th the mightiest adventures with the greatest heroes of them all the blackhawks I don't know if that's from a cover I'm assuming it would be one of the covers the deadly hawks of horror let's check this out what is this one I think this is the last story let's read the description of this one t-man join the Treasury Department and see the world Oh sure, off season, down in the valleys of southern France, people were sweltering in the sun. And where was I? Where else but high up in the Alps, Al Alps mountains, freezing my neck off while a mob of very nasty foreign agents plotted to give me a quick freeze with hot lead. -da! A quick freeze with hot lead. Let's see if this is the last story. If this is the last story, we're gonna read this. Yeah, let's read this one, gang. The last story of the book. Cool. So we're skipping one story in this. Right. Oh, look at this. They're tying a rope across from where he's skiing, right? Never do this to anyone would hurt look at him go and I believe this is done by the artwork is Irving uh, Irvin Steinberg did the art for this one It was late last October that the La Grez Geneva Express burst out of the Montchartre tunnel in the French Alps. Toot, toot. And hit, hit a loosened rail on the 100 foot trestle over Charest Gorge. Mondeau. Oh, look at that. It's going to go over. The result was a horror beyond description. Oh, no. 100 feet up in the air. Can't be good. I saw the wreckage about noon flying over it with Mac Laird of our Switzerland field office. It wasn't pretty. And somewhere down there, Pete, is Vito Fiore, our Naples agent with a briefcase full of data hot enough to blow up half of Europe. The Red knew he had it. They'll be after it too. You've got to find Vito and get the case 
to me in Geneva. I'll find them, Mac, dead or alive, and I'll get the data, he says. Ah, oh, there's another lady in the scene. As I walk towards the camp, an angel in white, white barred my path. Sorry, but if you're not a doctor or an aid man, you'll have to turn back. We're too busy to let viewers in. I don't blame you, honey, but this is official. A tea man, can I help you, Mr. Trask? I'm Hilda Buska. Buska. Maybe you can, Hilda. One of our men was on the train. I've got to find him or his body in a rush. The dead were piled in, in the snow. It wasn't always easy to tell what they look like in life. As near as I can tell, Vito's body isn't here. Then he may be among the injured in the hospital tent. Come along if you, if you can take it. I almost couldn't take it. There must be uh, pleasanter ways to make a living. Not there, I don't think. Then follow me, believe it or not. Quite a few people survive with mo no more than bruises, she says. Another blank, Hilda. That leaves only two possibilities. It may take hours to get all those bodies out. There's another aid station half a mile down where the front cars landed. Your man might be down there, she says. Oh, Gus, how about a lift down to the base? Sure, Hilda, climb in. You too. Uh -huh. Two should be double O's. You too, or you too. There was a litter of luggage all over the snow. My chances of finding one small briefcase, briefcase looked about zero minus. Have they started collecting baggages yet? No, that will come after the people have been taken care of, he says. We were almost to the bottom when I spotted the battle, battered figure of a man crawling from a from a coach window hold it that poor devil looks familiar stop gus there he is it was vito fiore vito it's pete trask where's the briefcase in there under seat he says i've got it good Hand it over, Mr. Trask. It was kind of you to find it for us. Ha <laughs> ha. What? And I walk right into it with my big stupid face hanging out. Oh, he was played. He was played. Okay. Here it is, throws it out of bang. Ow. And here's a five knuckle bonus to go with it. Uh -huh. Let me get at the capitalist dog. The other guy says. You got, you got at me, Buster. Now what? Trust just keeps on grabbing their wrists, eh? Interesting. Now I will kill you in a moment, the Russian says. I still hadn't figured out the whole score until sweet Hilda bent a gun barrel over my dumb skull. Oh, stupid, bungling, bungling fools. Bang. 
Knocks him in the head. I wasn't out, but my muscles were on strike. Let me kill the Burgo Bur dog and bring the uh, gendarmes. Bring the gendarmes with a shot. Let let him go. We have what we came for, she says. But that Trosk is a dangerous enemy to leave alive. You are taking orders from me after your stupidity in wrecking the train here. You cannot be trusted. Get in, fool. Do not try to move. You are hurt. There's someone there. Only my pride, Doc. Take care of my friend here. He really needs help. I had to move fast. This was no time to play it cautious. Here are my credentials. I've got to catch those three. They've caused the wreck and stole vital papers. They will not get far, Monsieur. There is no road down there, only a footpath to the ski lift at Mount St. Clair. Mont St. Clair this man will survive if he can be taken to the hospital tent at once the doctor says you take care of Vito I'll borrow somebody's skis and go after those red rats myself he says I couldn't compete with experts but I've done enough skiing to get around once they have to uh, to abandon the Jeep I'll catch up fast and when I do, he thinks. Now, they're afoot, and the advantage is, is on my side. My knuckles are itching for another crack at those jaws. There they go, riding the ski lift. Hilda, it is that Trask. I told you we should have taken care of him. This time I will not fail. Hey. Oh, he's on there with the skis. That's right. Oh, you pick my kind of game that time, chum. Bang. I falls down. Mademoiselle, Monsieur, you have reservations, no? Uh, they got up to the top. <laughs> to bargain. Show him your reservations, Gus. Sure, Hilda. I'll even let him feel it. Bang. Sacramond. What is the meaning of this? Pushes him off the toboggan. name of a pipe they steal our sled come back cochons return at once wait monsieur there is no ski trail down this side sorry friend but i can't wait pete comes in i'll make my own trail he says chasing the toboggan oh it's a what do you call it it's a toboggan run like a, a luge or something right cool once I caught sight of my quarry uh, down inside the ice walls of the toboggan run the rest of the time I was too busy and to think some idiots do this do this and call it fun <laughs> I'm taking a jump we where's the ski balls there they go if I if I break something on this last slope I only hope it isn't my sl uh, slugging arm <laughs> I 
Gus, you're a gun. Kill the T-Man, Hilda says. I thought I couldn't stop, but a, a buried rock caught me different. Taught me different. I, oh, look at that. It comes out of his boots. Here I come, ready or not. Nineteen fifty two skis, eh? Woof. I will escape. I will not be stopped. Bang. Look at the grin on his face. He's all happy. Bang. I will kill you myself, Hilda says. Yikes, I lost my gun somewhere in the snow. Oh, Oh, snowball in the face move. I snatched, uh, snatched for the handiest weapon, a chunk of frozen snow. This was kit stuff where I come from, baby. Poof, in the face. I'll take over, over now, sugar pie. You can take orders from me. A filthy capitalist pig, she says. <laughs> look at this <laughs> maybe I've got a mean streak but I enjoyed myself then mush on you eggheads faster it's 12 miles to town and I'm late for a date with the cops look at that look at that that's how they roll that's how they roll <laughs> fun i'm going to try to get more my hands on more of these so it's uh detached from the top stable okay maybe we ended up doing that through the reading okay but well worth it well worth it it's still attached to the bottom staple okay so either through this reading or <laughs> or or whatnot the top stable got detached right I will show you how to learn radio, television, servicing, or compu uh, communication by practicing in spare time. Nice. Well, I should show you that. Sorry. Your practice radio communication. Fun. Play red hot. Play red hot harmonic music in eight minutes flat. Like that harmonics is awesome i love harmonica i used to have one sure it slides pick out any melody automatically adds chords no notes to read cool and gang this first page here that was insane this has got to be this page here has got to be this has got to be one of the craziest, craziest panels ever. Here, Raghead, take this little fellow home and barbecue him for breakfast. I a pig, the insult beyond all insults to a Muslim. Crazy. <laughs> what the hell? Oink, oink crazy 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 fun read fun read t-man number three from 1952 two years before the democratically elected government of the of iran was overthrown by a mi6 and cia backed coup to take control of iran's oil right crazy 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 aside from that gang i'm gonna go back to the chat we are live streaming this and uh see what people thought about it see what people thought about it right <laughs> 